Hello everybody. Welcome to my class on functions and graph. Today uh, we are going to discuss that uh, how we can um, sketch the graph of quadratic function and uh, we'll deal with some related problems. So let's share the screen. So here you can see the topics like uh, quadratic functions and their graphs. And uh, also, it also includes some linear and cubic functions, uh, for example, in the example. So let's first define what is functions. A function is a relation that uniquely associates members of one set with members of another set. For example, you can say f is a function from x to another set x plus 2. And this is also written as fx equals to x plus 2 or y equals to x plus 2. Where x belongs to r means x is real number and real number has numbers uh, between in negative infinity to point infinity. So you can also write x belongs to negative infinity to a point to infinity inside the bracket and also in the inequality sense. So here in y equal to x plus two, if you put any value of x, you will have unique value of y in this case. That means this sort of relation between x and y is uniquely defined. Therefore, y equal to x plus two is a function. And it can be evident by taking two sets a first set for x and another set for y, which is fx, and say f is function from x to y. So for example, if you take value one, two, three, then if you put this value one, two, three successively here, for example, in this uh, function y equal to x plus two, that means one, uh, this is the position for f1, that means you are putting uh, x equals to one. So once it is x equal to one, you can see that fx or y equals to 3. So this value is 3. And similarly, this value 2 plus 2 is 4. And then this is two, uh, 3 plus 2 is 5. So here f maps x to fx. Therefore, function is also termed as mapping. And here you can see that y equal to x plus 2, uh, the degree of this equation is 1. This polynomial is one, therefore this is called a linear equation. So a graph of linear equation is always a straight line. So the function can be shown by a graph also. So here in this graph, if you go along this line, for example, you can say at each point on this line, the, for every value of x, there is unique value of y and hence uh, this is uh, y equals to x plus 2 is a function. So here you can see for the value of uh, x to be negative 2, then y value is 0. And there is only one value of y where it is 0 at x equals to negative 2. And here on the y-axis, if, if you see here, then for x equals to 0, if you put x equal to 0, then y equals to 2. So for x equal to 0, y is only 2 for x equals to 0. Therefore, for each point along this straight line, if you see for one value of y, there uh, x, there is only one value for y. Okay. Now, let's take an example of quadratic functions. So for example, take fx equal to x squared, or we can also say y equals to x squared. And uh, this first set is for the value of x and the another set is for value of y equal to fx. So here in this case, as we have y equals to x square, now, for example, you uh, take values of x as 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. And when you plug in this value into this function, then if you put x equal to 0, it's going to be 0. If you put x equal to negative 1, it's uh, square of negative 1 is uh, positive 1. And if you put x equals to one, so a square of positive square one is again one. So here you can see if you plug in x equals to two, 
and then 2s square is 4 and also for x equals to negative 2 so negative 2s square is again positive 4 so you can see that for two values of x there is only there is one value for y so here you can see that many elements of x at a time are associated with only one element of the function fx but in this case also this is uniquely defined because for given value of x there is unique value of y but only difference is that many values of x has one image here many values means if x equals to one and negative one it has image value one in fx and if it is two and negative two it has the image value in fx as four so many value of x are associated with only one value of uh, only one value in the another set of y equal to fx therefore this sort of function is called many one function and here also you can here you can see that for one value of x there is only one another value of y in each case in each of uh, for example two three uh, one two three so one element of x is associated with only one element of y therefore this sort of uh, function functions are called one one function or you can say that one to one relation and uh, you can see here this is a horizontal line that means it is the line which is parallel to the x-axis so this is x-axis and uh, its work is to test whether the function is uh, one to one or many to one so in this case you can see this horizontal line uh, intersects the given curve at two points so maybe it is plus one and then this is negative one so if you put negative one so the value of y at this point will be that is uh, negative one and value of y will be one and here for positive one uh, value of x the value of y will be one so for two values of x you can see here there is only one value of y that is one in this case this means this horizontal line crosses the curve at two points in that case we can say that this sort of function is many to one function but here if you make any test of horizontal line for example so let the line pass through this way it intersects at only one point here it intersects at only one point here from here also only one point that means this sort of function is called one-to-one -one function okay now discuss that uh, test whether or not a relation is a function you know that there are some association between two variables and uh, those can be relations only not a function in order to have uh, in order to say that relation is function there must be some unique relation like uh, we have just uh, we have uh, discussed earlier now here we check that how to test whether or not the given relation is function and at the same time we can test that whether this is one one or many one so let's take the same example y equal to x square where x belongs to r that is a real number and here if you draw the horizontal line that means it is uh, parallel to x-axis you can see that there are intersections uh, between this line and the curve at uh, two points with the same height you can see and hence we can say that yes this is many to one relation now in order to check that whether or not this is a function what you can do you have to draw a vertical line vertical line means you draw a line parallel to y-axis at each point on the curve and you can see that this vertical line intersects at only one point and even though even if, if you draw a vertical line at this point you can see that it is intersecting at only one point similarly here and similarly at any point that means you can say that for different value values of x there is unique value of y on this curve and therefore this sort of relation is function so here we can see more than one input values so so the same output values 
Therefore, f x equal to x square is a function. So here in this case, this is many one function because the relation is uniquely defined here. Now let's discuss about another function, y square, another relation we say, uh, y square equal to x, and then we test that whether or not this is a function. So in this case, uh, in order to test whether or not this is a function, we apply vertical line test. So in the vertical line test, you draw a line parallel to the y-axis. You can see that for the, uh, this vertical line intersects the given curve at two different points along y-axis. What does it mean? That means for the value 4, for the value of x4, y is, you can see here, y is plus 2 and also minus 2. That means for the same value of x, there are two values of y. That means the relation is not unique here. And the same thing you can see that if you take uh, a line x equal to 2, for example, or this vertical line, you can see for the value of uh, value of x equals to 2, we have two values of y. One is positive root 2, another is negative root 2. So in this case also, the relation is not uniquely defined. Therefore, we can we cannot say that y square equal to x is a function. So here, we can see the same input that is x equal to 2 and 4. For example, you can take a, another number also. So here we can see the same input, else two different outputs. Therefore, the relation y square equal to x, where x belongs to r, is not a function. So this relation is not uniquely defined. Uh, now we see that what is domain and what is range of a function. So let's consider the same function. For example, fx equals to x square. In general, you can say y equals to fx, where x belongs to r. So input means you plug in any value. Like if you put, for example, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. So this sort of values of x are called inputs. And f processes this value inside this uh, function fx equal to x squared, so squared of 0 is 0, the square is 1 is 1, the square is negative 1 is again 1, the square of 2 is 4, and the square of negative 2 is also 4, so this is many to 1 relation, and this is called actually output. All right? So here you can see that the values in the set x are these, and these input values or the set of these input values is called domain and thus uh, set of values of outputs is called range. That means domain belongs to x and range belongs to y or fx. So here in this function, you can see that this example states that state the domain and range for the functions represented by these two graphs. So you can analyze these two graphs. You can see here, uh, if you move horizontally, either backward or forward, and then you are moving along x. And then if you move upside, then that is uh, moving along, that you are moving along y. So here, in order to find the domain first, let's see that the minimum value of x is here, negative 1. And if you run towards along right side, right side along the x-axis, and then maximum value for x is 5. So total number of inputs are here between negative 1 to positive 5. So you can say that domain is between negative 1 and 5, both inclusive. And the similar work you can do for y, also y value, that is fx value. So you can see here, the minimum fx value is uh, negative 8, and the maximum fx value, that is y value, is 8. So negative 8 to positive 8, including all values are the range are in the range. So range of this function is negative 1 to 
will negative 8 to positive 8. And uh, here if you talk about domain and range, again we have to find the minimum and maximum of x that gives you domain, you can see here. And in order to find range, we have to see minimum and maximum of y and that gives you range for the function. Now, can you now find the domain and range for the function y equal to x plus 2 from the graph below? So this is this graph is for the function y equals to x plus 2. So here you can see that the minimum value for x is negative 2 and the maximum value of x is positive in this case. But what is difference between uh, this graph? You can see that all the points are dark dot over here. But here, one is dark, another is open circle. What do it mean? That means domain is uh, like here you can say negative 2 is less or equals to x, but is less than 0. It is at 0, but it's not touching 0. That means, and range you can find the minimum value for y is zero and the maximum value for y is two here. So range is from range is from zero to two. So this is y and this is you write only less than two, not less or equals to two because this is open circle. Guys, uh, let's see. This is x-axis and this is y-axis you can see so you can take a uh, different re uh, reference so here in this case you can see that uh, if you are taking y equals to x squared first of all then your graph look looks like this all right but we require y equals to minus x squared first of all then if y equals to x squared then y equals to negative x squared means y is minus that means it is reflection about x-axis in that case the graph turns like this same graph uh, so for negative x squared this x-axis y equal to negative this uh, x-axis acts as mirror for this graph so in the mirror if this x-axis is mirror you will see that your graph looks like this and it represents the graph of y equals to negative x square but uh, you can see that now this is the graph of x square and now this is uh, and this is a graph of y equals to negative x square but we require graph for 9 minus x square that means it is negative x square and then plus 9 so in the same graph you are going to add 9 along y axis so it will be somewhere here so this at this point and your graph will your final graph will be like this Okay, so this point is in fact 0, 9. So this is the graph of y equals to 9 minus x square. And now you have uh, got uh, another function also. So its graph will be like this. So you can see that here, like it is 2x plus 1. So when x equals to 0, y equals to 1 somewhere. Okay, so if x equals to 0 on y axis, then y equal to 1. So y equals to 1 is somewhere here. And you can see that the coefficient of x is positive. That means a gradient is acute angle. That is less than 90 degree. So in that case, your graph looks like this.
Okay. Then what would be this point? You can, if you like it, you can draw the line below the, this also. So this point is at, uh, if x equals to zero, you can see here, this is x equals to zero, then y equals to one. And also you can see here that this is the point of intersection between the curve and the line, this line and this line as equation, y equals to two x plus one. So, uh, if you are interested to find the line or uh, point of intersection between this curve and the line, you can little solve it. So here you have uh, y equals to nine minus x square, and also y equals to two x plus one, and their domains are defined here differently. So in this case, uh, because uh, these two um, functions, we say in general, then in, uh, in figure they intersect each other, then these two functions are, are equal. That means you can write here, uh, 2x plus one equal nine minus x square. And after transposing this to the, these two to the, left side you will have quite a equation like this x squared it is minus x so on the other side if you transpose it it is positive x square and then 2x is here and then this is plus one and if you transpose this to the left this is minus nine so one minus nine is minus eight and equals to zero and in this case i would suggest not to waste time in factorizing the things just go to the calculator and in the calculator, you can see that there is mode. And if you put five, that is for equation and you require the value of X in quality equation. So you put here one, two, three. So function three is uh, here quality function. So I put three in the same sense. And then coefficient of x, you can see that this is one. So I put one, then equal, that means enter. Then coefficient of x is two. So two equal, that means we enter two. And then constant coefficient is minus eight. If you put equal, that means you enter the value. Now press one time. Then your x1 value is two. That means the first value of x is using calculator x value x value you'll get is first value as two and again if you put equal then another value will be negative four so in that case this point of intersection you can say that this is this point of intersection is x equals to two now you put x equal to two either in y equals to nine minus x square or y equal to two x plus one, you'll have the same value. So it is nine minus four is five. And here it is two to the four plus one is five. So y is five at this point. And another value of point of intersection is here. So this value is uh, for x, this is negative four. And if you put x equal to minus four here, so minus four to the minus eight plus one is, this is minus seven, all right? The same value of X, if you put here, then this is four for the 16 and nine minus 16 is minus seven. So in this way, uh, we can draw the graph of the combined functions on the same graph table. But uh, according to the question, you have to, look at the look at uh, the domain so this uh, in this function domain of 9 minus x squared is negative 3 to 2 that means uh, you have to consider the curve from negative 2 the negative 3 to 2 that means negative 3 is here so let's check that at uh, x equals to 3 what is the value of uh, y equals to nine minus x square. 
all right so in this case uh, the uh, this value negative 3 you can put in only this function not in other function because uh, this is the part of 9 minus x squared not the part of 2x plus 1 so when we are putting x equal to negative 3 that is 9 minus minus 3 squared is 9 so that is equals to 0 so on x axis y is 0 so this point is minus 3 negative 3 0 so this is true so according to the domain the this curve is valid only from x equals to negative 3 to value 2 x equal to 2 okay so so we from this uh, sort of graph we take only this part and for this line you can see that this line is valid from 2 to 4 although there is infinite number of points of x and y on this line but we take um, the first section or the part of the line where the given domain is 2 to 4 so at this point you can see that this is 2 and this is 4 that means our main part of the graph is from here to this point and from this point to this point on now let's check what happens if you write uh, x equal to 5 so x equal to 5 is a part in this line but not on the curve so we put this 5 uh, x equal to 5 in this equation so it is uh, 2 times of 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11 here so this is the point 11 so you can see that um, the domain because it is uh, defined between two and four only so we don't consider other part of this line segment so just if you cut out this part then your final graph looks like this and hence our graph is ready now and in the second part of this question uh, it says that to state nature of the function nature of the function means you have to say whether this is one one or many one function so in order to check the type of function we make horizontal line test here if you draw a horizontal line passing through this curve and at this point the curve has maximum height here it is nine and uh, the line has also maximum height here, it is nine, because if you put x equals to four, four to the x plus one is nine. So here, this is the equation. And then here you can see that this horizontal line is touching at two points. And at other point also, you can see that from here that uh, the horizontal line, that means the line parallel to x axis, touches the entire figure at one, two and three points here you can see that this horizontal line touches this figure at two different points for x but for y at the same point so what you can say about this function so this function is many to one function so, there, uh, so here the horizontal line test within the given domain such that this is many one function so now note that horizontal line tests type of the function while vertical line tests whether or not the relation is a function you can see that this example says to find the largest possible domain for each function and state the corresponding range so here let's check for this Question number one. So in this question number one, it is given that fx equals to 3x minus 1. And here you can see that uh, x belongs to negative infinity and positive infinity. That is, uh, this is valid for all values of x in real number and for any value 
of x in real number that is unique values of y that is fx in the real number. So here you can say that if x belongs to r means y also belongs to the set of real number. So therefore, uh, you can say that domain of this function is between negative infinity and positive infinity. You can write either in this way. You can write negative infinity is less than x is less than infinity and the range is also negative infinity to positive infinity or you can say that negative infinity is uh, less than fx or y is less than positive infinity and you can also see the uh, case of, of this sort of function so this function is 3x minus one. So you can see here that as coefficient of x is positive, it has a gradient angle less than 90 degree. That is gradient has acute angle and minus one is the y intercept. So if this is x axis and if this is uh, y axis, then your graph will look like this. So this is a graph for three x minus one. So in this graph, uh, this is point zero minus one, all right? So here in this part, you can say that you can put any value of x between negative infinity and positive infinity, then you'll have the values of y between negative and positive infinity, okay? So as you increase y over here, x over here, then it gets, increasing increasing and if y decreases then x decreases then y also decreases until it goes it reaches negative infinity so therefore the maximum and minimum value for x is negative infinity and positive infinity and the same for y and therefore domain and range for uh, this function is both negative infinity to positive infinity all right so now in question number two you can see that its equation is y equals to x squared plus two. This is quite the equation. So in this case, uh, let's uh, make a rough sketch of this function. So here, if you make a rough sketch of this function, this is y axis and this is x axis. And you know that uh, the graph of uh, graph of y equal to x squared is something like this it goes to infinity and something like this so this is x squared graph of x squared but here you can see that x squared plus two that means it goes uh, two a step up along the y axis so your final graph will look like this so it is at three so it goes three bit up from here the same graph and it will be like this so this sort of part of um, graph is actually for x squared plus two. And now you have to find the domain in this case. So let's see here the domain, I write here dm for domain is, you can see the minimum value of uh, x can be anything towards negative infinity and also towards the positive infinity. So right hand side is positive infinity and the left hand side is negative infinity. So domain is again here, 
negative infinity to positive infinity or you can also write negative infinity is less than x and less than positive infinity so this is the domain for this function and if you talk about a range of this function that means it is uh, so you can see here its uh, minimum value is uh, at this point so it is uh, 2 that is x value is 0 and y value is 2 so y value start from starts from 2 and it goes up and up that is towards positive infinity all right that means uh, you can say that the minimum value of y as 2 and then maximum value can be anything along positive infinity and also you can write that means it is y is greater or equals to 2 so domain for this function is negative infinity to positive infinity or you can say x belongs to r that means any real number but for range of uh, this function uh, it is y equals uh, y is greater than or equal to 2 uh, we have fx equals to x minus 2 and we have to find the appropriate range appropriate domain as well as range for this function so let's first discuss about uh, the graph of function one by x for example so you can say that when x increases y decreases okay so if you say y equals to one by x that means when you put larger value of x then y goes decreasing all right and similarly if you flip it is one by one minus y so if y is large x is small so for example so it is x axis and this is the y axis that means when x increases y decreases and goes near and near to x axis but never touches it touches at infinity only and when it goes near and near to y axis that means x is decreasing but y is increasing and when it is very near to y axis it goes near and near to y axis but never touches this y axis so in this case you can say that the curve is asymptotic about x axis and y axis all right but in this case we require a graph for one by range domain and range for one by x minus two not one by x but we use the property that how the graph of this gets shifted from the graph of one by x in this case so here you can see that x minus 2 so you put x minus 2 and that is equals to 0 so x equals to 2 it means this uh, this is the y axis this is origin and it's set the shift uh, this y you can see that this y axis has shifted to the line x equals to 2 which you can represent like this so at some point that line is say it is x equals to 2 okay so this point is x equal to 0 you can say this is x equals to 2 all right and this is also possible that uh, for uh, function x equal to 1 by x so if uh, we have checked for x as for the negative value and similarly um, positive value of x you know, similarly you can check for negative value so as it goes a smaller and a smaller x value then it will be near and near to what x axis your another part of the graph for negative x and negative y will look like this so it goes near and near to y axis but never touches y axis okay 
in this way. So now we are talking of the graph of fx equals to one by x minus two. That means this graph has shifted two units right from O along x axis. So this point is x equals to two, all right? So then what will be your graph then? So all these things have been shifted to other side. So it will look like this. And from downside also, you'll see that it goes near and near to x axis, but never toss. So it goes near and near to the line x equals to two, and but never tosses. Okay, so in this way, so you can see in the dark color, this is the graph for fx equals to fx equals to one by x minus two, All right? So here in this case, now we are concerned to find domain of F and the range for F means range for the given function. So in order to find the domain of X, you can see that like, okay, so in order to find the domain of this function, Fx equals to one by x minus two, we have to look at this graph that x can take any value between positive, between positive infinity and negative infinity, but itself cannot be equals to two because if it is two, x is two, then it is one by zero and the function will be undefined. So you can say that domain is x belongs to negative infinity and positive infinity, but x is not equals to 2. And the range, if you talk about uh, range, you can also see that y is going towards negative infinity here and uh, uh, negative infinity here, and here uh, y is going towards positive infinity, but y cannot be zero. If y would be zero, then one by y, that means x minus two will be undefined. So uh, range for this function is, you can say that fx or y belongs to negative infinity and positive infinity, that is all real number, but there should be y equals, y is y not equal to we now discuss about or we now work for fourth example in this question, which is fx equals to under root x minus three and minus two. So let's just start here by substituting different values of x you know, to say the value, values of fx, that is y. So I'm taking here x equals to two. If you take x, x equal to two, that is then f2 equals to under root two minus three and minus two. So two minus three is negative one, that is minus one and minus two. You can see that this is not real. So we discard this value. And now x equals to three, then you can see that f3 equals to under the root three minus three minus two. So that is zero minus two. And this is minus two, which is real. So we take this. And, and for similarly, if you check for x equals to 19, for example, then your y value will be, that is f19 will be four minus two, that is two, and uh, so on like this. So you can see the pattern of this value, and you can see that this is not defined for 
a value less than three. So here in this case, you can see that the function defines for value of x, which is which should be at least three. That is greater equals to three, and value of y you can see the minimum value of y is you can check here the first valid minimum value is minus two so this is list value of y so this is greater or equals to minus two so this is the domain and this is the range of the given function Let's now discuss last example. It's a problem solving strategy. So here you can see that it is given that fx equals to 2x square minus 8x plus 5 for x belongs to r and domain is between 0 and k. Then express fx in the form of a times x plus b squared plus c, where you can see that a, b, c are the constants. So here, in the first part, it is given that fx equals to 2x squared minus 8x plus 5 and we have to express the given function in this form. So here, what we do is that we take two common, so we make x squared free of constant other than one, and inside the bracket, we are left with it is x squared minus two four the eight, so two is common, so you are left with four, and then x, and then outside it is five. And then it is two now, make that in the form of a square so we write here a square minus two a b all right because to do the force you can write this is two times x times two in order to make in the form of a square minus two a b plus b a square and that we know that that is a minus b for a square so up to here you adjusted but we we'll require one term as two a square and this two a square we have put in here extra so we have to balance by its negative value so it is minus two a square and close the bracket and outside it was five and then it is two now you have a square minus two a b plus b square form so far up to here it is x minus two whole square minus this is two to the four and then Five is already here. Now you open the bracket, so it is two x minus two a square, and when two distributed to four, that is two four that is eight, so this is minus eight and plus five, and finally it is two times of x minus two a square, and as the negative sign is bigger here, so minus eight plus five is it is minus three. So if you compare with this, you can see that in place of A, we have two, and in place of B, we have minus two. So fx in this case is two times of x minus two a square plus, sorry, it is minus three. So this sort of equation form has become into the square form. So this is the answer for this part of the question. Okay, now we shall discuss about the second part of this example. So in the first part, we gather the information from this function uh, in order to draw the graph of this function. So here you can see that from this function and by our previous knowledge, you can see that the coordinates for the vertex is, it is two and then if it is two, the whole thing is zero over here. So 
y value is negative three, so it is minus three. So vertex is to minus three. If you are interested, you can also use x equals to minus b by two a in order to find the vertex. So this is uh, x equals to minus b by two a means minus b means it is in place of b. If you look at this uh, equation, you can compare that with uh, x squared plus bx plus c. Then b value is negative eight, and then divided by two times of a value. You can see that the coefficient of x squared is the a value, so a value is two. So it is negative negative times negative is positive, so it is eight divided by four. So four to the eight, so x value is uh, two. And in the same equation here or there in any equation, if you put because these two are the same equations, only the forms are different. So if I'm using this, then my f2, that is fx value is going to be here, two times of uh, two minus two a squared and minus three. So the whole part is zero, so this is zero minus three equals to minus three. Even if you apply x equals to two here in this equation, like fx equals to 2x squared minus 8x plus 5, then it is f2 equals to 2 times of 2 squared, and then minus 8 times of x means it is 2, and then it is plus 5, so you can write, write here 5, and then it is 2 to the 4 to the 8, and minus 4 to the 16 plus 5, so, 8 minus 16 because negative sign is bigger, so it is minus 8 plus 5 and minus 8 plus 5 negative sign is bigger again, so it is negative 3. So your vertex value is again here 2 and negative 3, so you can find vertex in either way. Now we shall look for a few more points uh, in order to have uh, proper orientation or proper foot points for foot points in order to draw the graph for this function. So you know that at uh, x axis, y equals to zero and at y axis, x equal to zero. So if you put, if on y axis, x equals to zero, so your fx that is y value becomes it is zero and zero, it is five. So you can take either from this equation or this equation, no problem. So here it is, y equals to, x equals to zero means two times of zero minus two a squared. And then this is minus three. Now it is two times of two to the four because it is a squared. So negative sign becomes positive. So it is four to the eight, now two, to the four, four here, and then minus three. So four to the eight minus three is five. And directly from this equation, if you want to see, then x equal to zero, this term is zero, second term is zero, then you are left with plus five. So you can go through the first form of this or the given form of this equation as well. And uh, next, if you would like to find, uh, on the x-axis, you know that y value is zero. So if y equals to zero, you can see that uh, two x minus two a square minus three, which is fx equals to y, and we are taking that as zero. So you can write here zero, and then it is x minus two a square transpose this negative sign to right uh, it will become positive and it is multiplied if you transpose it to the right it is divided by two or you can write in the form of one uh, 1.5 because three divided by two is 1.5 and next step will be x minus two equals to plus minus under root 1.5 good idea is that take a calculator and calculate this, this value is 0 0.8. That means on the x-axis, there are two values of x, that is 0 0.8 and 3.2. So now note down the important values. So vertex has coordinate to negative three. 
you can see here and on the y axis you can see x equals to zero then y value is five and then on x axis we have two points here so one point as uh, x equals to 0 0.8 when y equals to zero and another point uh, on the x axis is 3.2 when y equals to zero you can see that uh, domain for x is zero to k so we have to work uh, through the value of x bigger than zero and up to k within which there is supposed to have line of symmetry on this curve. So let's draw a line of symmetry. So if you draw a line of symmetry, in that case, the line of symmetry will definitely pass through two because two is the midpoint within this sort of thing. So here, I'll suppose that this is a line of symmetry, it passes through the vertex. Why, it, uh, why x equals to two is the line of symmetry? So this line is x equals to two because this is the vertex that divides the curve. Here, x is the line of symmetry as uh, the, this is passing through the vertex of this curve and the vertex is, the, is either minimum or maximum point on the curve. So here in this curve, this is the minimum point and about this vertex, if you see that the half of the curve is towards the right of this vertex and another half towards the left of the vertex and also you can check that uh, this point is 0 0.8 and this is 3.2, this point is 3.2. So if you take the average of this point, it will be the midpoint. So this point two will be the midpoint. So this is 0 0.8, this is 3.2, so that it is and divided by two. And so 0 0.8 and 0 0.3 is four, so four by two, and this is two. So this is the midpoint for these two points at 0 0.80 and uh, 3.2. So therefore this is a line of symmetry. Now, According to this domain, we have to go right to this origin because it says that x is bigger than zero. That means we can walk to the right from this origin until where k goes so that there is line of symmetry. So what I'm searching for here, if this is five and this gap is from here to is two, then from here to here, the gap is another two. So coordinate of x at this point will be two units up to here and another two units up to here. So that is four unit and the height will be five. And even if you want to check whether or not this is four and five, so you are sure that if this is four, y must be five. So in this case, you put x equal to four. So four times two is two, two to the four is Two to the four and then times two is eight minus three is five. You can check it here. Okay, so if uh, x equals to, if you are going to say four, then this is y equals to two times of four minus two square minus three. And then this is uh, two times of two square is four minus three. It is eight minus three. And then this is five, all right? And now let's check what happened. That means if you draw a line, vertical line that passes through 0.4 and drop on this x axis, you can put up to here only. Okay. And then you can see that this value as x equals to 4. Now you can see that this is two unit and this is sorry this is two unit and this is also two units so this would be along the same straight line and uh, as it is given that x is bigger than zero so it you, know, you cannot consider the part of the curve beyond this behind this 
y axis. So, at that case, in order to state the value of k for which the graph of y equals to fx as a line of symmetry, you have to take in, into the range x greater or equals to 0 and lesser or equals to 4. And if you compare these two, therefore you can say k equals to 4. So therefore, for k equals to 4, there is line of symmetry for this graph. What if you take k equals to 5? If you are taking k equals to 5, k will be, uh, this line will touch somewhere here. And if you take the equidistance from this point, you should go beyond this y-axis, which is not defined by this domain. Therefore, you can work only until x equal to 4. And you can see that from 0 to 4, there is a line of symmetry x equal to 2. And if you compare these two values, uh, to these two uh, inequalities, so in place of k, there is 4. Therefore, k is equal to 4 is the answer for this part of the example question. Okay, lastly, in the third part, you can see that for your value of k, which is 4, from part 2, that we have got in part two, k equal to four. Find the range of value, uh, range of f. Range of f means you have to check range within the domain from zero to four, where k equals to four according to the second part of this question. So here in this case, we have to once again look at the graph. So in this curve, you can see that the minimum y is minus 3, that is negative 3, and the maximum value of y in this case is, you can see that what is the maximum value? Maximum value occurs at x equals to 4, which is 5, to have line of symmetry of this curve within the given domain. So maximum value in this case, you can see this is 5, so that range of this function, that is fx, is minimum is negative 3, so it should be greater or equal to minus 3, and maximum is 5, so it should be less or equal to 5, and this is the end. Okay, guys. Uh, this is all for now. I hope you are now able to do sums from first exercise of functions and graph. Okay, then. This is all for now. And thank you for your patience.